This is PBS. fighting my conviction, fighting the sentence, fighting for my life. Yes, I am a political prisoner. From death row, this is Mumia Abu-Jamal. As a youth in the 60s, I was in, impressed by the black power movement that was sweeping black America and the black world in Africa and the Caribbean. This was 1968, and it was the presidential nomination of um, George Corley Wallace III, I think that's his name. But he was running for president on the American Independent Party. Um, in retrospect, it's kind of crazy to think that we would go down to a demonstration in South Philadelphia, which is like predominantly white, and protest against George Wallace coming to Philadelphia. But at that time, you know, we believed that it was our city as well. So we did it. And Every one of us got our asses kicked uh, by plain clothes policemen. Um, you, you probably heard the, the tale, I beat you so bad your own mama won't know you. Well, it has a particular relevance to me because as I was laying in the hospital, charged with assault and uh, aggravated assault and beating of a police officer, uh, my own mother walked by me, looked me dead in the eyes and kept walking because she couldn't recognize me. I was beaten unrecognizable. I was in my uh, mid-teens at that time. From that period and from those experiences, uh, from me having to go through the hell of that and, and seeing the complete lack of power of people to resist that, I was attracted to the Black Panther Party. You know? So because there was not a functioning, active Black Panther Party at that time, we founded one and built one in Philadelphia. You know? I was the lieutenant of information. We had many of opportunity to kill them. But my police don't kill people in clove bulb. We leave it to the courts. The COINTELPRO program was a terroristic program. Its function was to terrorize radicals, revolutionaries, opponents of government programs and to stigmatize and isolate them from the general population. My career as a journalist began with the Black Panther newspaper. There is where I learned how to write. In fact, I got into broadcasting because I enjoyed writing so well. It is the media that gives people the reflection and the perception of changes and, and political moods changing. What you have now, more than any other time in America's history, is more corporate multinational control of media. So when the media gives a certain slant and a certain perspective that is always pro-government, you know, the government is right, they don't do anything wrong, or it's, you know, uh, the only time they really get investigative is if, if dealing with someone else's sexual foibles. Instead of a real basic economic, social, political breakdown on what's happening in America, then you can easily slant See what I'm saying? Move is a family of revolutionaries uh, committed to 
resisting this system. As a reporter covering them, I became exposed to them as opposed to reading about them and found out that what I read about them had no relationship to the kind of people they were and what they were about. That every published report was tinged with prejudice and hatred. At that time, in late 1981, what you had was, um, you just had nine members of the MOVE organization being sentenced to 30 to 100 years for a crime that everybody knew they did not commit. I mean, um, nine people cannot kill one man. It's impossible for your, me to say what my feelings were in that time. Um, sitting in a courtroom, seeing that kind of naked, injustice. It rankled me to the core. Um, you know, I said a minute ago I was seduced into the MOVE organization by the loveliness and goodness of its people and its members. I was probably enraged as well as sitting in a trial in an official capacity, objective as a journalist, and seeing that the law really didn't matter, that it didn't matter whether a man was innocent or guilty. It didn't matter uh, what the law says your rights were. The press is responsible for what's happening in this city. A new breed of journalism that doesn't want both sides. Jamal, a local newspaper and radio reporter. He is under guard in Jefferson Hospital with a bullet wound of the chest. Detectives say Jamal appeared, apparently from across the street, and gunfire erupted. The backup officers found Faulkner lying fatally wounded. Yeah, I was charged with homicide uh, of a police officer in Philadelphia. I read a quote by Thomas Jefferson. He says, I have no right which another can take away from me. But when I was on trial, and I exercise the purely constitutional right to defend myself. Uh, and it was denied. It went through me like a thunderbolt. <laughs> the prosecutor introduced an article from the Philadelphia Inquirer, which was an interview with me when I was uh, a young teen. When I was Lieutenant of Information of the Black Panther Party. If the jury were not predominantly white, middle class, older, uh, in their 50s, Black Panther would not have had the kind of impact, a negative impact, if they were uh, young people, blacks, Puerto Ricans, who had knowledge of the current and contemporary history of Philadelphia. Uh, the word Black Panther means different things to different people depending on their perspective. Uh, and the prosecutor knew that exceedingly well. convicted of murder in the first degree and 
been sentenced to death. Independence weekend celebration at JFK Stadium. But first, the big story in action news is the sentence of death for convicted cop killer Mumia Abu. Every prosecution is a public and symbolic act, a political act by the state to show the populace the illusion of control. When you look at the prisons anywhere in America, you're looking at a burgeoning population um, busting out of walls, you know, just, just growing, growing, growing. People are being put two to a cell and doing life sentences, you know what I mean? The Census Bureau says something like 31 million people were in poverty. They can't eat, they can't have shelter, they can't have clothing. And you have uh, an infusion of drugs from um, Central America, which provides an economic incentive. You have a lot of these people coming into these prisons. You know, they find this is, is an empty hole. You know, there's nothing, nothing corrective being done to people in these jails. Huntington as an institution reflects Huntington the valley, uh, the rural, maybe 98% white. The rural area is like an appendage of the jail. Uh, the prison is a great economic resource for this area. Um, people on staff here come here at a young age and retire from here, and their sons come here and their grandsons come here. There are generations of people working here from the same, same background. The only blacks they may see other than Bill Cosby on TV are blacks in handcuffs, you know. So it tends to give one a kind of skewed perception of who black people are, you know. So it's a perfect breeding ground for racism. symbols, the death penalty comes readily to mind. Um, historically, and according to statistics published by the same government, right, um, the death penalty was found to be of the greatest utility for controlling blacks. Um, here in Pennsylvania, blacks are about 9% of the national population. Uh, here in Pennsylvania's death row, we approach 53%. Nationally, the population of blacks in prison, period, are something like 47% when we're 13% of this nation's population. Um, clearly, just looking at the numbers, looking at um, the amount of blacks in prison on death row, you must address the racist nature of the criminal justice system. 